Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Zenitin, and welcome to today's video for Legends of Rune Terra. Today, new champion. We got a Noxus boy. We got Scion. And, well, as a lot of people expected, he's a big boy. He's a very big boy, big ball of stats, uh, and he's very beefy, and he beats people up really hard. But is he actually a good card? Uh... Just, nah, I'm not sure yet. He's kind of hard to evaluate. Uh, but yeah, we got Scion today. No new keyword though, so just Scion and his support cards. So, enough rambling. Well, let's take a look at Scion himself. So, like I said, big beefy boy with a nice keyword in the form of Overwhelm. So, there's a lot of text here with Scion, so we're going to have to actually do a little bit of evaluating here. And there's a lot of different things going on with science. So first off, seven mana, three, six, overwhelm in Noxus, just mono Noxus, no dual regions. When I'm discarded, grant your strongest ally overwhelm and place me in your deck. I have plus one plus O oh for each card you've discarded this game and it maxes out at plus seven plus O. Oh, so it can be a 10, six if you've gotten the max. To level them up, you have to have discarded or summoned 35 plus power. That's a lot, but I'm going to say because you can discard Scion himself, that is a big jump in power discarded if he's big. So maybe it's not that difficult, but it does sound a little tough. Also, I'll say this. Um... Before you say yeah, no duh, streamer, um, Scion is expensive. Let me finish here. So, Aloof Travelers? I don't think you should play Aloof Travelers because, well, Aloof Travelers doesn't discard your own cards, but... And I'm not saying you should play this as, like, an Aloof Travelers counter, but a lot of people want to try out Aloof Travelers with Caitlyn and Teemo. Scion getting discarded to Aloof Travelers, it's not like game losing for the Aloof Travelers, but the Aloof Traveler player is like, oh, well darn. Because, I mean, like, sure, giving the strongest ally Overwhelm, it's fine. Like, don't get me wrong, it's not bad, but it's not, it's not a game winning change. Like, you're not getting any extra stats, it's not really affecting the board too much. It's letting you get in a little extra chip damage to put you... Put your opponent down to like burn range, I guess, for decimates if you play decimate in a Scion deck. Now then, before we talk more about Scion, we got a little bit of a, we got two more forms of him to evaluate. Level up form and then Scion return. So, what does Scion do when he levels up? Well, he kind of turns into Trindomir, but better. Um, so when he levels up, he's permanently a 10-6. He doesn't have his whole, he gets plus one, plus oh for the whole discarded stuff. He's just permanently 10-6 now. The, uh, and then when he dies, he turns into, he comes back as Scion Return. Very, very flavorful and stuff. <laughs> very nice, uh, translation from his league form, I'll say with that. Uh, but now, um, he still, he also still gives you the whole Overwhelm thing when you discard him and he goes back into your deck. But what does Scion Return do? Well, Scion Return is a 10-4 with Overwhelm and Ephemeral. And then... When he is summoned, you also rally. So this is basically like, okay, I need to, I'm, this is like, I don't know. I don't know how you would say it. It's like, this is it. This is a big power spike turn, a game ending turn kind of thing. That's how I'm looking at Scion Return, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time evaluating this guy. Like I look at him and I'm like, he's a, like a weird Darius Trindamir fusion like he's got the whole coming back from death thing like Trindomir has he's a big beater which I mean I guess Trindomir also does but so does Darius so I don't know the discard mechanic itself is pretty strong but it feels like Scion would be more of a mid-range discard deck and the discard mechanic has mostly been for aggressive decks basically discard aggro sure Rummage gets played in things as well, but besides rum, I guess also Sump Dredger too. So yeah, there's like Sump Dredger, 
Rummage and to a lesser extent Zonite Urchin get played in non-aggro decks. So the discard aggro mechanic is pretty powerful, which is why I do think Scion will get played. I don't think by himself Scion's actually that good. And I am worried about the discard archetype actually being good enough for Scion because it generally just has been for aggressive decks with maybe one or two value cards being good. Like I said, um, Sump Treasure, Zonai Urchin, Rummage. And Rummage has seen a little less play ever since it got nerfed anyway. Um, I could also see, like, some weird, like... I don't even know, because, like, Survival Skills is another card I'm thinking of. Um, you also got, like, Horo Cannon as a zero mana way to discard cards. So, I think there is something out there. I just don't... I also... Like that Scion seems like he doesn't pair just with one champion. I'm all, I can already think, like, you got the classics. You got Jinx and Draven as partners for Scion. Um, but personally, I kind of like... I kind of want to use the whole discard effect of giving something Overwhelm. That's what I'm looking at when I look at Scion. I'm like, oh, yeah, that seems great. I want to give something that doesn't normally have Overwhelm Overwhelm. And I probably want to play P and Z as well, because, like I said, Rummage, Sum Treasure, and Zonite Urchin. And then you also get, I guess, Mystic Shot too, which is just a great card. You also get, um, what? Jury Rig, um, Flame Chompers, Boom Baboon, uh, Get Excited for another Discard Enabler, Survival Skills is a good Discard Fodder card. So I think P and Z is probably the best region for Scion to pair up with. And a PNZ champ I would like to see with Overwhelm is Vi. Like, Vi with Overwhelm is going to win a game. So I like it. It's like you don't need, you don't have just Scion as your win con. You have Scion, along with Scion returned, his final form, as a super strong win con. And then you have Vi with Overwhelm as another really good win con. I like it. So, yeah, big fan of that. You can also, I guess, play like, um, I think it's called Ruined Reckoner, the four mana Minotaur that gives you the Midnight Ray. That's, I think that's the card's name that lets you get a free attack with one unit. That's also pretty good. Uh, it's like a discard fodder card and getting a free attack with Vi seems pretty sweet. So I like it. Now the issue is I feel like, I don't know. Overall, I think the problem with this discard mid-range deck is it's weaker than discard aggro, which I know it's a little bit difficult to compare because this is more mid-range and that's aggro, but I feel like the discard mechanic is just a little more aggro-focused and sure, I can discard Scion, but eh. But yeah, I do like that it seems like discard is going to be a... um. I don't know, to use a, a term from Magic, a evergreen mechanic, a mechanic that just is going to be in every single set or just it's not going to be like a very one and done or a special thing. It seems like they continuously are putting out more and more support for discard. So maybe in the future we'll get more discard mid-range and even discard control cards because those are archetypes that can exist as we've seen in other card games. We've seen discard mid-range and discard control be a thing. Also, his champ spell. Roar of the Slayer. Three mana fast spell. To play it, discard a card. Then kill the weakest enemy. I like this. I really, really like this. Um, Purely because it's a fast spell. If this was slow speed, I'd be like, eh, it's fine, but whatever. At fast speed, I love it because... Your opponent might be like, oh, I'm going to use, like, some small thing to, like, get a little chip damage in on Scion. So it lets you, like, kill the weak chump blocker and get in a little extra damage with your Scion or, or your Overwhelm unit in general. So I'm a fan of it. I think it's a solid card. Um, But yeah, three mana fast speed removal. Um, It's got some good synergy because it enables your discard. Um, discard payoff, 
So I th- I like it. Also, you sh- you always have to think about it whenever you see a three mana card. Tri beam could be a for could be used for a tri beam deck. Um, and it's not like it's hard to get discard fodder. You can also play what ballistic bot if you want even more discard fodder. So I like this card. Solid card. Uh, next card, ancient warmonger. Five mana five five. Overwhelm. When I'm discarded, grant your strongest ally plus two plus L. I don't like it. So it's the same amount of stats, in my opinion, to Ruin Runner. Ruin Runner is a 6 4 overwhelm spell shield, while this is a 5 mana 5 5 overwhelm without spell shield. So I'm going to compare it to Ruin Runner because, well, Ruin Runner is like one of the best units in the game, and it's a good comparison unit because they're very similar. So this card is basically trading off the spell shield for the discard clause of giving your strongest ally plus two plus L. Um, I think that small change, honestly, really just doesn't make this card that good. Like, it's playable, I think. I do think this card is playable. I just don't like it. Like, sure, like, if you have to summon it, sure, it's a 5 mana 5 5 with Overwhelm, which is not terrible. 5 mana 5 5s are fringe playable if they have a good keyword. And Overwhelm is a top tier premium aggressive keyword. Almost not as good as, like, say, I don't know, elusive or something, but still, it's pretty decent. And it is a burst speed buff, kind of, with cards like Poro Cannon and Rummage. Um, and yeah, I guess even with, uh, get excited, cause part of just casting the get excited spell is you get to discard a card. So you still get to buff things at burst speed. So that's cool. But I feel like, I don't know. It's, it's weird. It's like, I don't really like to discard this card. It feels like I'm, I don't know. I'm, I'm too value brain, I think is the problem for this. So my brain's just too small and too value oriented to be like, am I really going to discard a five mana five, five? So I don't know. It's fine. It's like, it's a solid mid game threat. That is also a nice occasional combat trick to push in a little extra damage to try and go for lethal. So I like the card, but it's really just for, discard decks and probably not even for discard aggro but just discard mid-range um but yeah that's all the cards for the first page we got two more pages to go so next page fallen reckoner all right what's this guy do five mana four three overwhelm terrible stat line for a three or for a five drop that's a three drop stat line three mana four three overwhelm that's just iron ballista so this needs to do a lot of work for it to make up for that two mana difference so what's it do when I'm summoned, Grant can't block to the weakest enemy. Okay, that's pretty good. That's decent. Last breath, create a Risen Reckoner in hand. Okay, what's Risen Reckoner? We can see it over here on the right. Three mana, Overwhelm, Ephemeral. When I'm summoned, Grant can't block to the weakest enemy as well. Okay, okay, I like it. It's not a bad card. Don't get me wrong. I think that whole line of text, getting an extra unit when it dies giving can't block to the weakest enemy. I do think that makes up for the two mana difference between this and Iron Ballista. The issue is it's extremely slow. So you play this, you make your opponent's weakest enemy, weakest unit, whatever, unable to block. The problem is, in my opinion, priority passes back to your opponent. They get a chance to react, whether it's by just playing like a big board wipe like Ruination or uh, avalanche even though it technically doesn't kill this um they can just summon another unit at five mana they're probably going to be able to summon big units that can just block this guy and you can argue like well you're getting a risen reckoner streamer yes that's a value but again it's slow so i don't know the what the thing i i do see one line of play that i like Dropping this on a turn where you don't have the attack token at the end of your turn to make something unable to block to set up a really powerful open attack for the next turn. That's the only situation I like this card in. Um, But I can see this card getting played as like a one of or a two of in certain decks. 
like certain Noxus aggressive decks in the right meta. So I'm not a big fan, but I think it's playable, like fringe playable and constructed. Now the next card though is from fringe playable to wow, this card's great. Fallen Rider, two mana, three, one would fear some. That kind of sucks. When I'm discarded, create a Risen Rider in hand. Risen Rider is a two mana, four, two would fear some. Okay, okay. So basically, if you discard this card, it basically gets plus one, plus one, in other words. So that's pretty good. Really, it's going to come down. I feel like this card is a good card, but... Well, one, I feel like Nocturne looks at this card and is sad, not because it's good against Nocturne, because who plays Nocturne nowadays, but because this is the kind of card Nocturne would probably like, just a very solid early game unit, but Nocturne's early game kind of sucks. Poor Nocturne. Uh, but yeah, I don't know, like... Fearsome aggro hasn't been a thing in a while. Like, spider aggro still occasionally shows up, and they're, like sort of fearsome aggro, but nothing like the old Shadow Isles Mist Wraith fearsome aggro decks. So I like this card. Um good discard enabler. Or sorry, discard fodder that honestly replaces itself. So big fan of this card. Um worst case scenario, it's a two mana three one would fearsome, which yeah, that's bad. Don't get me wrong. Especially in a meta with a lot of pings like make it rains and go hards, etc. etc. So sure. But I do think this is a solid card, especially if you're able to get it to discard it early on to transform it into a 4-2 fearsome. 4-2 fearsome's just insane for two mana. And really I think this is also going to come down while I think the card is insane, I think it's gonna come down to how good is the fearsome keyword in the meta. If fearsome's good this card's good, unless it's like a non-Noxus Fearsome deck. But yeah, like, if a lot of 2-mana 3-2s are in the meta, I'm not that impressed by this card, but I, I like it, I like it. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not against it, I'm, I'm a fan of it. So yeah, big fan. Now the next card, eh, I'm not a fan of this. Lost Soul. 8-mana 5-4, when I'm summoned or discarded, create a Twin Blade Revenant in hand. Okay, fine. What's a Twin Blade Revenant? Well, let's go to the next page to look at what that is, because we don't have to look at this card too much. It's just an 8-mana 5-4 that creates a Twin Blade Revenant. So, what is the Twin Blade Revenant? 4-mana four 4-3 four Challenger. Last Breath, create a Lost Soul in hand. So you're never summoning Lost Soul, because it's an 8-mana 5-4 yeah, that summon or that puts a twin blade in your hand. You're I feel like Lost Soul is just gonna be here for discard fodder. That's it. You're just going to you're almost always gonna want to discard Lost Soul. But then you get a four mana four three with Challenger, which I'll be honest with you, is not even that great. Like it's just gonna be a removal card, like a bad removal spell. So yeah, I don't know. Now I will say this, that's a this is a very grindy card, like Lost Soul. Creating Twin Blade Revenant, Twin Blade Revenant, creating Lost Soul. You got a nice unending loop unless your opponent plays like a Silence of some kind, like a Hush or a Mini Morph or Equinox or something. So you got a nice unending loop going on here. The issue with that is similar to Fallen Reckoner. That's really slow. It's really grindy and that gives you a lot of value in the late game, but that's slow and... The current meta is really fast, and unless we get, like, a lot of good stall cards or certain balance changes, the game meta looks like it's accelerating more and more in the future rather than slowing down anytime soon. I'm sure Riot will eventually do something to slow down the meta if it gets too fast, but at the moment, the meta, in my opinion, is just way too fast for Lost Soul and Twin Blade Revenant to see play. Uh, similar, though, to Fallen Reckoner, I could see it as, like, a one-of or a two-of. Similar to how, like, it basically, I look at this, like, kind of like Noxus's Commander Ladros. Commander Ladros doesn't see much play anymore, but I'm equating Lost Soul and Twin Blade to Commander Ladros because, like Ladros, this is a very slow, grindy card. 
So I like it. But I like cards that are value. So I'm not a big fan of this card, in all honesty, in terms of meta competitiveness. But I like the design of this card, to put it simply. Next card. Noble Rebel. 3 mana, 3, 2. Overwhelm. Grant me plus 2, plus 1, once you've discarded 3 plus cards this game. I don't like it. I'm not a fan of this card. I think if you want to play this card, you need to get it active on the turn it's summoned, or at least on the turn it attacks. So if you have the attack token on four instead of three. So if it's active, it's a three mana, five, three overwhelm unit. I talked about this earlier with the Fallen Reckoner, Iron Ballista. Iron Ballista is a three mana, four, three overwhelm. So it's the same exact cost, but Noble Rebel does have one more attack point. But you have to fulfill the condition of discarding three cards. If Rummage was still one mana, sure, I could see it. You could play like turn one, Zonite Urchin. Turn two, play another one drop, bank one mana. Turn three, Noble Rebel, and then use that one bank spell mana to Rummage. But I don't know. I guess you could argue, like, okay, turn one, Zonite Urchin, turn two, some two drop, turn three, Noble Rebel, Poro Cannon, because it's a zero mana discard card, but I don't know. I think it's just going to be really, really hard to get this thing fully powered up by turn three, so I don't know. I just, I just think it's too, how to put it? Too conditional, inconsistent to actually be a 5 3 for 3 mana early on. Because as the longer and longer a game goes on, your early game beaters start to matter less and less. Like, it's kind of like how Iron Ballist. Iron Ballist is solid and like great on 3, but like around turn 5, it's like cool, a 4 3 for 3 on turn 5. I'll just play a 5 mana 5 5 or 4 5 or whatever. And whatever. So, not a big fan of Noble Rebel. Really just think it's kind of mediocre. Now, from mediocre to what I think is probably the best card here. Reborn Grenadier. Wow. <laughs> this card is nuts. 1 mana 3, 2 Ephemeral. To play it, discard a card. And then when it's discarded, summon a copy of it. So, it fulfills both... Scenarios, it's both discard fodder and a discard enabler. That's crazy good. Like, I don't know about you. I love this card. I think this card's great. Um, I look at this like a flame chompers for Noxus, I'd say. That's what I'm looking at this as. Like, comes down, just an annoying card. I guess flame chompers is better on the field, but because this has flexibility and that it's both fodder and an enabler, it's good though. So I like it. Um, honestly, I could see this card getting played in discard aggro as it is right now, not just discard, um, discard mid range. Like you would play with Scion. like definitely going to play this in discard mid range with Scion, but I could see this in a jinx Draven discard aggro deck. I mean, okay. So, before it got nerfed, what was his name? Dune Keeper? I think that's the guy's name. The one mana, one, two, that summons a sand soldier. It was a one mana, two, one when it was first released. And a lot of people were like, wow, this thing's busted. It's one mana for four damage for one card. Now, I know this is two cards, but turn one Zonite Urchin discarding Reborn Grenadier. That's five damage on the board, and you were able to get another card because the Urchin drew you a card from discarding the Grenadier. Sure, it's two cards compared to the one card of Dune Keeper, but that's a very powerful opener. And another thing? For the mid-range decks, the non-aggro decks, it's sort of a burst speed blocker, if that makes sense too, right? Like, burst speed blockers are not 
that common of a thing. You have what, like Claws of the Dragon? Um I'm trying to think of other ways to get blockers at burst speed. Jury rig, I believe there's one in Sharima that no one ever plays that gives you clocklings at burst speed as well. So, you know, you play Rummage or Poro Cannon, and then you get a 3-2 blocker at burst speed. A 3-2 blocker kills a decent amount of stuff at burst speed, so I like this card. So, probably one of the best discard cards out there, in my opinion. Just very versatile, because it can be both fodder and a discard enabler. Um, it's got that potential to be a 3-2 blocker at burst speed. It could even be a 3-2 attacker at burst speed, too. Um, we've seen how good those are in the form of, I can't remember the name of the, ca the card, but the four drop or the four mana card that summons a mist rate at burst speed. So I'm scared of this card in all honesty. This card is kind of terrifying. So, yeah. And then the other thing is like healing kind of not great right now, ever since they nerfed Targon. We are getting some new healing cards, though, with the new Shadow Isle card, so maybe that'll help, but I don't know. This card, Reborn Grenadier, it hits hard, and it's a region with cards like Decimate. I'm kind of terrified of this card. Like, And then if you're PNZ, you also have Get Excited and Mystic Shot. That's a lot of burn, too. So you'll have the Grenadier to get in a lot of early pressure, Get Excited, Mystic Shot for some extra burn, Maybe some decimates, sigh on himself for more damage. Um, the ancient warmonger has overwhelmed, so a little bit extra. Zonite urchins, boom baboons, um, jury rigs for your discard enablers and discard fodders. Maybe a survival skills or two, along with a poro cannon, like the survival skills to keep um, a big overwhelm unit alive, like keep your scion alive maybe a vi alive if you're playing scion vi like i'm thinking i'm really scared of this deck in all honesty <laughs> this is terrifying and we still have three more cards to go salt and stitches two mana focus speed spell to play it discard a card summon a reborn grenadier and give it plus two plus oh this round meh so i was gushing over the reborn grenadier this card I'm not the biggest fan, but I don't hate it. So it's a focus speed waking sands. If I'm trying to compare this to other cards, I don't think it's a good card, but I can see it as like a one of, or a two of basically as like the fourth copy of reborn Grenadier itself. So I think this card is definitely playable. I'm just not, I don't know. It is a focus speed spell. And that is like, you're getting a five, two at focus speed for two mana. So that's pretty solid. We all know, like, because of action, we all know getting a sandstone charger at focus speed because of action, how strong that can be. That's terrifying, in fact. So yeah, I, I'm not a, I'm kind of scared. I'm not, I'm scared of this Grenadier stuff going on. Thankfully, the next card, not that good. Weapons of the Lost. Eight mana slow spell. Okay. Slow spell means it's bad, right? <laughs> Deal three damage to a unit and summon a Trefarian Shield Breaker. Trefarian Shield Breaker is that old card that no one really plays. The five mana six five with Fearsome. And that's all it has. Um, So you're paying eight mana. So I don't know. You're attaching an extra three mana to your Trefarian Shield Breaker to deal three to a unit and potentially have it get countered by Deny or Right of Negation. I, I don't know. It's not a good unit that's summoning or getting summoned. Three damage is not a lot of damage by the time you can actually play this card. You're passing priority, so your opponent can then just play more units or affect the board by playing like a Ruination or a Avalanche or whatever, or Vile Feast or something. So I think this card is actually garbage, in all honesty. Like, out of all the cards seen today, this card is the worst. And honestly, in my honest opinion, probably one of the worst cards we've seen for the set release. 
Uh, it does seem like... Now, here's the thing, though. It is a common card, so you'll see it a lot in Expeditions, and I do think this is a great card for Expeditions. But constructed-wise, I think this card is bad because it's not a lot of damage, it's expensive, it's slow, and the unit it summons isn't even that good. The last card, though, is so, some decent card here, I think. Great Physician. 2-mana, two 2-2. Two, two. Discard a card to draw a unit. So, it's Noxus's Zonite Urchin. Uh, I like it. A pretty solid card. It's pretty good even outside of discard decks, in my opinion. Like, we've seen how good Zonite Urchin and Sump Dredger are in cards or in decks that aren't even that heavily discard synergy oriented. Just discarding random cards like Draven's Axes, Ignitions from the, uh, what is it called? Ballistic Bot. Just cards that are just bad in a matchup or cards that you just only want to draw one of and you drew two of them. I like it. Um... I'm not sure how much I like that it only draws a unit, though. That's... I don't know. I guess for the more... more... board-focused decks, it is nice that it's giving you a chance to get more units and fight more for the board, so I guess, like... Draven decks in general... Um, I could honestly see this card in an Ezreal Draven deck as well to try and draw... Your Ezreals, your Dravens, your Captain Farins. So I could see it in that too. So yeah, I like it. The issue I feel is there's a lot of cards that want to discard cards now. So you have to strike a weird... It's like there, you got to get a balance between enough discard enablers and enough discard fodder and you might argue well what if i play ballistic bot i'll have near infinite fodder sure of course you're not wrong but if people can they always try their hardest to kill ballistic bot with things like i don't know merciless hunter and so on and so forth so you need to hit a nice balance and great physician i feel like in a discard centric deck might just actually get cut to to play more discard enablers or just general, um, in general, say, um, just, what am I trying to say here? Just good value-y, just standalone good cards, like, um, I don't know, Mystic Shot. That's always a good standalone good card. But yeah, I like the card. I do think it is playable. I think it's actually probably better than a lot of these other cards I talked about. Like, I do think Great Physician is better than, I don't know, Noble Rebel and Lost Soul and even Fallen Reckoner. I'd put it, if I had to compare it to another card here, I'd put it about on the same level as Ancient Warmonger. I think it's, I think Great Physician is a solid card, good effect. It is a discard enabler, but I think for all the other discard enablers, it's probably one of the weaker discard enablers, but it is a good effect though. So I can see it getting played. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Those are the Scion support cards, and Scion himself seems like a pretty good champion, in my honest opinion. Very flavorful, at the very least, and very thought-provoking. I'm having a hard time trying to how, trying to evaluate him and deciding exactly what kind of deck and what champion wants to pair up with him. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed the video, though. I'd love to hear your opinion on some of these cards. Maybe you think I'm dumb and you think Re Reborn Grenadier is not as good as I'm hyping him up to be. Maybe you think Weapons of the Lost is actually nuts and I'm dumb for thinking it's a garbage card. I'd love to hear your opinions. I'd love to hear how you would build Scion yourself. Um, and if you just enjoyed the video in general, I'd love it if you could leave a like or a comment down below as well. Always helps me out and all that. And if you guys want to keep up with the Legends of Runeterra content, you can always go and subscribe to the channel. Anyway, though, with that all said and done, Thank you all again once more for watching this video. That's not how I do that. <laughs> That's not how I do that outro at all. I forgot it's, I forgot to show my Twitch. But if you guys want to watch me play some Legends of Runeterra, you can go and check me out over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Saniton, where I stream Legends of Runeterra pretty much every single day. And with that said and done, thank you all again once more for watching this video. And until I see you guys in the next one, uh, bye!